So that's like makes a longer yeah. regeneration. We've just started living in this digital world sort of over a sort of gradual, maybe 10 year period. Yeah, it's a little strange. This is a particularly wrinkly shirt. So I'm only worried because I've got friends coming tonight, so I want to look my best, you know? We kind of go out to all these different places and you're not quite sure what's going to happen from night to night. And there's not too many things in life that kind of offer you that adventure aspect. It's an interesting stage to be at, you know, we've made five albums as a band together and a bunch of other EPs and different releases as well. Four years, three years, something since our last record came out. So we probably ended up with, yeah, good, good two years at home. Why do people do this? Which almost feels like starting again, you know? It's like you have to kind of reintroduce yourself to people. When the show kind of builds and there's a good response and feeling more connected with the other guys and with the crowd, that's essence of what you're trying to do as a band is have, uh, have those moments. I try to picture being on stage and it's almost like my memory of it's abstract. on tour it's a good time to I guess reflect on you know where you're heading with your music and kind of what you're into it's probably a bit like you know going up to the moon or something living in zero gravity for a while you know this overload of information and technology and it's just like it's it feels so crude vast endless wasteland of images and bizarre bits of um, detritus Just the weirdness of it is, is sort of a, an intriguing thing. Trying to find this kind of beauty in amongst all that chaos that was happening became, uh, you know, maybe a part of what we wanted to do making this record.
Yes. Doing the easier part, seeing the part. Point made. Point made. Right. Future. You often don't quite know what you're working on until it, you know you've been working on it for a while. So yeah, probably spent a good six months or so just sort of coming up with new ideas every day. For starters, we were all based in different cities around the world, and um, we were, you know, sharing files and things like that. This time around, I sort of tried to, I guess, really sort of be a bit more personal. He'd give me half ideas or ideas that were more fully formed and just say, just do whatever you want to them. Who played the following cabinet? The only one person in this group who played the following cabinet. That's me. And then you've got all these gold records. Lil Kim, that's yeah. the one. That boy paid for electricity for five years. Yeah. Then we get up to the cutters. Yeah, that's right. We paid for like three candles, long since burned out. <laughs> Yeah, I guess from, from there, basically went to Atlanta, um, recorded and, and mixed and ended up with um, a finished album. band for a long time, it's like being in a relationship for a long time. It's amazing that we've been able to maintain like a, you know, a friendship. Turn up the volume all the way it goes. Ho is sort of like the heart and soul of Cut Copy. It really does give us an edge, I guess. I guess you could call Hoey the edge. Dan is definitely the glue that holds everything together. Some people probably don't even know what's going on in his head a lot of the time, and he, he does keep things close to his chest. Like just personally, I kind of like it, just feeling a bit like you're, you're Superman and then you just go back to being Clark Kent. Browning is the most musically proficient. I don't think anyone in the band even knows what a, like a, a suspended chord or a diminished chord or anything is, really. And then Mitchell is just like, just when you think you've, you've kind of got a handle on what he's about, he'll just pull something out that just blows your mind. I used to throw my drumsticks out into the crowd occasionally, but then I stopped doing it because a couple of times I'd throw out a drumstick and just hit someone in the head because they're just not even looking. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it took us four years to put out this new record. It's a long time for a band not to be putting out music, especially in this day and age. But I think for all of us now, the stakes feel a lot higher because, you know, we're five records in, we've been a band for 
like yeah, 12, 14 years, and now it's like, you know, you don't get to do this forever. More, I guess, real world, you know, realities creep into sort of what you're doing. The challenge for us now is like trying to connect with like a new and younger audience that are kind of out there. I guess where we are now, I don't really know what that's going to be at the end, but it's almost like the bar raises. The only real sense of that you have of like whether people like the record is when you see them like at the shows and see how they react to the songs. So I'm looking forward to hopefully getting some good feedback and some, you know, validation on, on, on why we do this. Um, yeah. You know, being thrown in this adventure together, four of us that are like, you know, the best of friends. Quite a sort of strange concept that I don't know whether really exists in other professions or in other walks of life. It's more important the relationships in the band are than, you know, what we technically do on stage. It's sort of being like brothers in a way. Eugene, what's the first song? A good intro. It's almost like a weird 90s ethos. If we do something that we think is artistically great, then to have faith that there'll be some, I guess, like karmic return. Yeah, I remember being younger and, you know, before I could play the guitar or anything, you know, listening to music was just the most amazing thing. But then once you learn that that's really just sort of three chords, it takes away some of the mysterious quality of it. The, yeah, but the way it makes you feel is, can still be just the same. You know, the way that we perform our show is a lot more sort of visceral and the performance is a really key part of what the music's doing for people. It is really pretty incredible. It's hard for me to even explain what it's like. The guys in the band are my best friends. You know, I'd, I'd be hanging out with them anyway. I wouldn't change it for the world. This is exactly what I want to be doing. You know, things have changed a lot, but I think, you know, the more things change, the more things do kind of stay the same for us.
Thank you. Thank you.